Just outside Hobart, below iconic Kunanyi, is the Longley Micro Farm, where owner James Hutchinson has realised his dream of a small-scale farm supplying quality produce to the city's booming foodie culture. We're certified organic and we use uh, flow tillage strategies. We encourage the life in the soil and we grow a diverse range of food. So we'll grow up to 150 different crops in a year. The difference between micro farming and more traditional bed cropping might be the intensity. So we might have more rows of carrots than you would traditionally. We can grow our crops closer together. And the reason we can do that is because we're monitoring the soils. We don't turn over the soils. So we're using biological tillage which means the life in the soil should be able to maximise the yield potential in the soils. We get more crops more often out of the same piece of land. This is a, an example of where we're in, into cropping. Yep. Uh, radish, French breakfast radish, and there's one, two, three, four rows of beetroot. The French breakfast radish comes on pretty quick, you know, so it's 27 days. These are ready to come out now, and you can see they're really nice. That's lovely, yeah. yeah. Then, of course, that gives the space for the, for the beetroot. Yep. So you're putting in a quick turnover crop, you're able to utilise that and, and leave the long-term crop in there, but you're also able to use the, uh, the baby leaves as well, aren't you? That's, that's right, because right now the, the leaves are, are pristine, so we can use the leaves in a mescaline mix or something like this or a salad mix, you know, so, yeah. Primarily, we feed families through a veggie box system. A farmer's able to grow a diverse range of, of crops, and we can feed a family seasonal produce every week. So we feed between 40 and 55 families wow. per week across the season, and then also restaurants. So we tend to supply the top food yeah, creatives. So our system works really well for both of those markets. And for the chefs, we can rapidly change to a different crop if they need a different crop because of the amount of beds that we have, and the chefs really like working with us. And also it gives the families that take our food the same quality of food that's going to these top restaurants. And also it gives uh, scope for a lot more creativity in their kitchens because they're having to think about maybe some produce that they wouldn't normally get from the shops and that sort of thing. So this is the last of our season's um, uh, bullhorn capsicums. Yep. Um, we've got some fresh cut rocket here for you. Uh, and they'll probably be the last of the flowers as well, almost. Yeah. That's, yeah. Ben and I are from Fico in Hobart, yeah, and we sort of started using James about uh, six months ago, even though we've been open for three years, and he's now one of our biggest uh, suppliers of vegetables. We usually do use uh, smaller producers, practising sort of backyard permaculture and that sort of thing. Um, and it was one of the reasons that we decided to open Fico in, in Hobart, uh, in Tasmania, was just because you have, unlike bigger cities, a really direct uh, contact and relationship with your suppliers. To successfully have so much turnover cropping, you need great soil. And James is a fan of one particular natural ingredient. You've got a fair bit of char here. Yeah. Um, can you explain the benefits of adding char to your mixes and your soil? Well, there's, there's so many. I mean, it occurs naturally in soils anyway, but um, we think of it as, as a soil scaffold. You know, so it's microporous, it'll hold oxygen, it holds uh, moisture. It's pure carbon, so it has a bond with other elements. So it'll hold the other elements in a balance and slowly release these things. It's a pretty quick process to change over a bed that's finished one crop and prepare it for another. This is really important for us, you know, so that we can get in extra crops every year rather than waiting for a crop to develop and this sort of thing. So it's a soil up approach, always aiming to increase the, the soil life. Yeah because we're looking at growing as much as we can year in, year out by keeping as much soil life as possible to maximise our crops. It's been a, a mission to try to develop a food system and see if we can actually make this sustainable in the long term, which means it has to be profitable. So we're trying to create a profitable system on you know, a piece of remnant land. This is a micro farm in name only. James is using techniques to grow his organic produce that maximise productivity and efficiency. A big result from a little place.